me tell you something. I got sent a food to test out and this food is absolutely amazing. It's gonna be a game changer when it comes out. I can't wait to tell you about it, but we can't do that yet because it's technically not even real yet. But anyway, today I want to take you down to Richmond, Virginia with me to a store called Schools of Fish. It's owned by a friend of mine named Rama Sabakan. He is an awesome guy. I've known him about 10 years. I used to sell him fish before I even had a YouTube channel. That's how far it goes back. But he has a newer shop. He's been in there, I think it's been like six months or so, but he gave me a call and said, hey, why don't you come down here and I'll give you a tour of the new space. I said, yes, let's do it. I'm ready to get out of the house and go do something just away from this garage. So let's do it. Let's go down to Richmond and let's meet Rama and get a tour of his shop. Hey, how you doing? I'm Rama Sabakan, owner of Schools of Fish. Can I take you on a tour? Let's go. All right, come on. All right, so this is Schools of Fish. Uh, welcome to my shop. Uh, just give you a brief tour. Uh, this is our 500 gallon tank. This is pretty much our peacock tank. Uh, we got some tamensis in here. Uh, we actually started off with some uh, smaller fish and we had, we we're going to do peacocks and pikes, but this red atabapo is a very aggressive fish and he's pretty much killed off a lot of the smaller ones. So we have these tamensis and we're going to get some more. We're probably going to take him out. But uh, this tank is going to be full of peacocks. Uh, peacock bass. Peacock bass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a lot of peacock. I got a lot of Alana Cara fans on I my channel, you. so. It's a peacock bass. We got some Tamensis peacock bass, and uh, we're probably going to mix it up, put some Azul peacock bass in there, and maybe some others, like some uh, uh, Ocellaris and things of that nature. But uh, pretty much this is our biggest tank we have right now. Uh, in this tank, this is our 250 cube. It uh, looks a little smaller, but it's deeper than it looks. Uh, this is our uh, store mascot, the Moo Puffer. He loves to eat. Uh, a little later, I'm going to have to throw out some uh, clams. He loves to uh, crunch them like Doritos. Uh, <laughs> these are pretty much our uh, holding tank, you know, miscellaneous, mid to larger fish, some predators, some aggressive fish. We have some red devils, small arowanas. Uh, but we also carry big stuff like these uh, Roselon torpedo barbs. And the uh, driftwood, good lord, the driftwood is incredible. Yeah, I pride myself, I have a really good uh, driftwood distributor. Uh, we get some nice red cedar driftwood, uh, comes from North Carolina. We keep tons of it in stock. And uh, we also carry Malaysian driftwood, which sinks automatically. Uh, this stuff is, uh, it will stain your tank a little bit. But, you know, if you uh, soak it or boil it, if you have the means to boil it, uh, that'll take the tannins out of it. People uh, love that these days, though. People are all over the, the dark water tanks and the tannins. I, I'm a real big fanatic of natural tanks. I like to keep it nice and uh, as natural as possible. I'm a, a little biased towards South American, so I love my driftwood. Uh, just some of the other stuff, you gotta mind the tops. We have stuff like the arowanas, which like to jump. Uh, we are a volume seller, so we get a lot of different fish in, so sometimes we change the tank setup sometimes. Uh, we have some mollies. I just recently got back from Florida. Uh, we had a ton of fish, but uh, we sold a lot in the short time that we got back in about two and a half weeks ago. We had some really nice male sailfin mollies that were caught down there. Uh, so it's pretty much gonna be our general section. Uh, tanks over here are just gonna be mostly our guppies. Um, over here is where we keep uh, our planet tanks um, and our shrimps. We sell a lot of uh, small ornamental shrimps. I had no idea shrimps would be as popular as they are, but they are. <laughs> you know, some people like the look of having a, a million Skittles on the bottom of their uh, tanks. <laughs> Add a lot of nice color. We have some blue velvets, which is probably our most popular selling. Uh, I don't know what it is about blue, but it brings people out. You know, it's a color that uh, people seem to like a lot. Um, 
here is where I keep our betas, betas, whatever you like to pronounce it. <laughs> it's, uh, I know it's pronounced beta, but I find myself saying beta all the time. This is just, why you and I are yeah, friends, because yeah. I've been the same way forever. Sometimes you get trained in your habits and you just, it's hard to get off That's of that. That's right. But, yep. you know, don't kill me if I say beta. <laughs> but uh, to each his own, tomato, tomato. There it is. Um, we uh, had a really nice uh, um, uh, uh, Mata Mata turtle, uh, which we actually sold that. Right now we just have some musk turtles, which are uh, pretty feisty. Got a couple of those guys. Um, this tank, uh, we actually just had a, a light malfunction. The light stayed on. It wasn't turning off at night, so we had some algae growing in there. Uh -oh. uh, this is actually a breeding pair of discus. Um, we got these guys in, and we had them in our main discus tank, and uh, they were breeding left and right. So I said, you know what, let me put them over here. They're still for sale, uh, but uh, ever since we put them in their own tank, they seem to not get along too well. Maybe the, the light's too bright. They need a little bit of dim. So a put proven breeding pair of discus, how much you want for them? Uh, they're actually going for uh, $300 for the pair, for that size, which is actually pretty good. That is good. Um, you have a you know, yellow... Uh, checkerboard and uh, actually yellow pigeon and uh, uh, marble but uh, which one's the male which one's the female I don't know <laughs> it's uh, I always tell when I see the female laying the eggs and the yep. male fertilizer. I know people that could come in and say oh that's the male that but I'm not one of those people <laughs> yeah it's we, we, we had a customer one time that uh, he said this is guarantee of a male I know it's a male by the way the lips and the next day that it was laying eggs so <laughs> you never go by uh, physical, you know, description, in my opinion. Everyone's an but, expert. Yeah, everyone's an expert, but that's just me. You know, some people may be better at it than I am. Uh, this is our discus section. Really skimpy right now. It's actually been really hard getting discus in. And when we do get them in, they go pretty fast. Um, we actually sell a lot of discus. That's actually how I got started selling fish. Uh, I bred discus and I, uh, you know, started selling the babies online. Uh, but we normally sell a lot more discus, so again, don't judge me on the four discus we have in our tanks. Normally it's <laughs> pretty full in all different variety of colors, but uh, this is what we have right now. Uh, my supplier is actually just getting a hard time getting them into the country and having enough to ship to me. So, you know, it's, um, I have a shipment coming in tomorrow and hopefully I have some coming in tomorrow. Again, uh, we have uh, a lot of different tetras. We get a lot of tetras. We, Sell them at very reasonable prices. Uh, one thing about uh, my shop is I have an extensive uh, list of suppliers and I always shop around to get the best prices. So we try to sell our uh, Tetras much cheaper than our competition. Uh, but one other thing, these aren't Tetras, but these are very popular. I guess you call them nano fish. Uh, these are the pea puffers. Uh, cute as can be, you know, get about the size of a pea, uh, but they're very popular. We, uh, always try to keep those in stock because people tend to love them. And they're, um, they can be a little feisty like a puffer, but what I've found is when you keep them fed, you know, they're not as bad. So you gotta keep a good supply of uh, snails or make sure you feed them uh, brine shrimp or uh, frozen blood worms. Um, we have a ton of uh, uh, pygmy, uh, pygmy um, quarries. Uh, not a whole lot of, Tetris right now, like I said, we have a big shipment coming in tomorrow. We'll stock back up on Cardinals, Rummy Noses, Neons, um, pink Penguin Tetris, all that good stuff. Congos? Congo Tetris too. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite fish. Me uh, too. Favorite Tetris. See, uh, I knew I liked this guy. I always have to explain to customers. We get the little tiny ones in and have to explain this is going to be a really nice fish when it gets bigger. Yep. But uh, they, uh, those are absolutely beautiful. And actually, if you can find the uh, albino congos, those are really nice also. Um, these are gonna, we have a lot of display tanks. Not so much just to pick the nicest fish out, but we like to show you guys and girls, uh, like to show everyone uh, the type of fish that we have. Uh, and just, what they're gonna- Let me just step in here real quick. <laughs> I told Rama before we started, don't call my audience guys. That's why he stumbled there for a second. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm catching myself. But, uh, we, we, we sell a lot of fish, we're a volume seller. And as a volume seller, we get a lot of fish in. And in today's world, you get a lot of fish, they're not gonna be full grown. So you get a two inch fish, a uh, customer can't see the potential in that fish. So we like to get fish to show people what they're gonna look like. And uh, these aren't full grown, but this is actually a breeding pair of um, red terror uh, cichlids. It's a South American cichlid. Um, 
these are the Peruvians, I believe. You have the Peruvian and, and the ones from Ecuador, but I think these are the Peruvians. Uh, they've been courting, been digging their little pits, but um, I don't think they're quite old enough. Uh, we had to put some convicts in there because they were, the male tried to kill the female. Uh -oh. uh, that's one thing about a lot of the aggressive uh, uh, cichlids that get mid-sized and bigger. Um, the males uh, sexual dimorphism they're much bigger than the females and they will get very uh, aggressive towards them the um, and the females are the ones that get the really nice colors but we found that the comics can you know give and take a little beating and give it back a little bit so they've been a good mix with each other so you're using convicts as dithers convicts nice. as dithers I like it <laughs> but uh, gotta make sure it's the right size though because uh, too big and uh, the red terrors would have been the dithers um, but this is our bear breeding pair. Hopefully we can get some uh, activity out of these guys right now. Like I said, I think they're a little too young. Uh, down here, we have a L24 uh, cactus Placo. Just got him in a couple weeks ago. Uh, he hasn't really darkened up yet to, you know, his really magnificent colors yet, but um, very beautiful uh, Placo from the cactus family. Um, one of my favorites, if you have a nice big display tank with big fish, that's a uh, fish that I would highly recommend. With a big emphasis on big. Big. <laughs> we like big fish around here. <laughs> it's, uh, we get a lot of big, big uh, monster fish, but try to be reasonable. You know, some monster fish aren't really tank appropriate, so we don't really advertise too much uh, fish that get way too big for a typical aquarium. Um, in this tank, this is actually just kind of like a mixed tank. Uh, Everything got kind of thrown in here. We've got a couple uh, guppies. We have this nice uh, Delta Beta, Beta. Uh, some Catapunctatus, it's a Tanganyikan cichlid. And uh, I think it's a pair of uh, Curviceps in there also. So just a very eclectic mix, mix of fish. Um, we have some nice guppies down here um, and a few just small tetras and uh, little nano stuff. And down below, we just have some um, Julia Dichromis, another type of Tanganyikan. Trying to breed those guys, but they're kind of a secretive breeder. So, you know, you may not see them breeding too much. Or they do get a uh, good size, but they're nowhere near, you know, full size yet. Uh, right here we have uh, Parrot Convicts. We sell these all day, night and day. Uh, why they call them parrots? They're not really parrots. They're really just um, hybrid convicts. To, uh, they have them to bring the blue out which the male's feeling a little bashful now, he went hiding. This is our female. Uh, they are another, I don't think they like the um, constant uh, interruption. You know, you're trying to get into breeding mode and there's constantly people watching you. I don't think they're the two photogenic type, but uh, this is our breeding, you know, display types. And we actually, the um, co uh, cl uh, Colombian blue-tailed tetras, they've actually bred more than the, um, than nice. the uh, pair of comics. <laughs> Uh, in this tank, this is just our planet, uh, ADA tank, um, it's been kind of neglected a little bit, you know, it has CO2 on the bottom, uh, I need to uh, weed out some of the uh, algae that's growing and put some more big, we have some breeding pair of Bolivian rams in there, but in this jungle they don't come out too much. Um, this is just kind of was a grow out tank for um, uh, frontosas and we had some uh, Paratropolis minerambos but we actually sold those. Was well, a display tank? I don't typically sell fish out of the display tank, but sometimes I have a customer that just absolutely had to have it. And you know, in business, everything's for sale. You That's know. right. You <laughs> know. Except for that puffer. Except for the puffer. <laughs> Except for the puffer, and the another thing we're going to get into. I don't want to give it away right now. Yeah. Um, over here is just our general tank. Typically, over here we keep our um, South Americans. We have some. Uh, Juan Milleri, Geophagus, some Severum, some Curviceps, uh, some Bacordi cichlids, uh, some Balzani, then just some uh, snakeskin Garamis customer brought in, some rainbow cichlids, like I said, typical bunch of South American fish. Um, we usually keep more peaceful South Americans over here, like angels. We literally got convict, this is our convict row down here. I don't know if you want to call it Death Alley, you know, Death Row. You know, fish aren't dying, but most of our, our penitentiary is down on the bottom. We literally, I, I tell customers, we give credit for fish, 
But uh, comics, we literally probably get about 100 every two weeks. And I, if I gave credit for all the comics we have, I wouldn't be in business because uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have any fish. Uh, but, you know, I think if you want a fish that breeds, comic is probably the best thing. But, you know, disclaimer, it will kill a lot of fish. They don't call them comics for nothing. Right. <laughs> uh, over here, we just have some yellow porticaris. Uh, like I said, just the standard stuff. Real popular fish, uh, German blue ram, some gold rams. Um, we sell a lot of those. Can't go wrong with rams. Um, wow. Yeah, rams, uh, definitely a good nano fish. Uh, over here in the display tank, we actually, doesn't look like we have much in here, just some guppies, but uh, if you look a little bit closer. Ooh. Ooh hello. <laughs> we have a nice soft shell turtle, Florida soft shell turtle. Nice. Uh, we had some fish in there that he thought that we thought were compatible with him, but they are no longer amongst us. Uh, they are in uh, the belly of the turtle, the belly of the beast. Um, but uh, we do sell turtles a lot. It's just hard getting turtles of regulation in four plus inches that are nice and affordable. In this tank, we're actually still working on this tank. I put it together really fast and I didn't like the way it came out. This is going to be our vivarium, uh, palatarium. Uh, we have some uh, um, dart frogs. I don't want to say poison dart frogs because they're actually poisonous when they eat the food from their native land, so they're not actually poisonous. I uh, did not know that. You yeah, just so, taught me something. Okay. So, you know, I always take the poison out of it, you know. Uh, you're and not going to put... The, this is the first tank you see when you walk in the door is this one right here, so it better be right. <laughs> yeah, uh, what we're going to do more than likely, I wanna, I'm all about natural setups. I'm probably going to put some archer fish and some other cool South American fish in here with these guys. Uh, maybe some type of, um, I don't know, not a bar because they're not really South American. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Uh, another day. It's always something going on in That's a right. fish store. Always something to keep you busy. Uh, this is pretty much our African row, you know. One thing I will say, Africans are probably our most sold fish. We sell more peacocks than we do South Americans, even though I have more love for the South Americans. Uh, so I probably need to expand the African section a little bit more. We do keep our bigger Africans over here, which we'll get to. But, um, you know, we get a a lot of mix of different types of Africans. Uh, these uh, zebra obliquidans, they're uh, Lake Victorian. Um, we have some small peacocks in there, uh, just some Dimonsani and some turquoise jewels. Uh, blue dolphins, real popular. Uh, we're actually a lot more stocked than this normally. Like I said, we, uh, we have a big shipment in. Typically we have a big shipment in. I won't, I'll kind of thin down my order just to make room because one thing when you're buying nowadays, uh, there's a rush to ship stuff in, out. So, you know, we don't want to stock tanks that are fully stocked with new fish because it leads to a lot of fish getting sick. So I try to thin stuff out as much as possible. Uh, this right here is the biggest discus I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Whoa. You, you, you will be surprised. It's two things <laughs> that happen when people come here, uh, that typically happen around here. Somebody that thinks that's actual discus <laughs> or, custom, or people that come into the store thinking that this is actually a fish uh, food store where they want a fried fish sandwich, oh, even though no. it says aquarium on the store. So, <laughs> you know, it's uh, not trying to mislead anybody. Uh, I don't think discus get anywhere near that big, but no. if they did, that would be really cool. Um, so this is again our African section. This is going to be our salt. Well, this is our salt water section. A um, couple big empty tanks. We try to keep these tanks for big stuff like big lionfish and uh, big sharks and big triggers. Uh, but we pretty much sold what we just had out of here recently. Uh, I think this tank had a big marine beta just recently. Uh, salt water is very hard getting stuff in right now um, of good quality. So I'm very selective when I order. If I know it's not going to be, I'm not going to order just to order. I'm making sure that the fish that are coming in are good quality. Uh, so what we have in there, there's actually a few things in here, but they're hiding. Uh, just saw a big uh, blue hippo tank. There we go. There he is. They say find an Nemo, but I got to find Dory. <laughs> but uh, that's one thing about the saltwater fish. You know, you can have a tank full of fish, but, you know, when you look in the tank, you may not see anything. You just got some more stuff in here, like powder blue tang, uh, unicorn tang, damsels, uh, a few corals. Uh, nice um, blue jaw trigger. 
um, some type of uh, angelfish. I'm not exactly sure what type that is. Um, fox face and coral beauty. I actually have to deliver that to one of my customers today. Uh, we do aquarium maintenance also. And this section, we just kind of put this section up. We're still putting it up. Uh, we had a little ammonia spike in it still, so we're just kind of going through a cycle on it. So what do you think? The shop is awesome, isn't it? Well, guess what? You only saw a little bit of it. The shop is huge and Rama is not done giving us the tour. But unfortunately, the video was going to end up being about 45 minutes long because Rama is a lot like me in that he just talks and talks and talks and likes to be very in-depth when he explains things. So decided to break this up into two parts. The second part is going to upload after this one, a few days after this one, Tuesday to be exact, but I don't know when you're watching this. So if you're watching it the day it uploads, it's going to come out Tuesday. But if you're watching it anytime after that, it's uh, I'm going to end up putting it right here when we get to that 20 second mark before uh, the end of this video. So you can definitely click there and you'll be able to watch part two. Gonna wanna come back for it. Make sure you're subscribed because there's a lot of really cool things to see. He's got a brand new reptile room in there. He's got a breeding room that he's working on right now and a really cool project in the back of the store that involves koi and kids and stuff. It is awesome. So you're gonna wanna see that. Make sure you either click here or be subscribed and you'll get the notification. Uh, anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye.